That's the name of my boat, Buckets. 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 What we get. Not the only transfer we got from Florida. Buckets. Keith Stone, too. Remember that. Everybody who watches his show on a regular basis knows my love of the stretch four. You know, we all make mistakes. He might have made one going to town. Let's see if y'all don't know. Shit. Let's see if y'all don't know. <laughs> Dribble to the left, cross over to the right. Hurricane to the game, many buckets for the night. Not with the pin and roll, but listen with the give it a go. This shall you, hoodie girl, duck it in the hole. Check the scoreboard, this what we fall for. Peep the gameplay, we want an encore. Yeah, over time for another ride. It's buckets out the buckets, baby. You out of time. It's buckets. What it is, homie, it's buckets. Woo! We get buckets. Yeah, baby. Buckets. 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 I have no shame. I know. That's the problem. You guys are awesome. What up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Buckets here on Five Reasons Sports, Five Reasons Canes. You got me and Vish tonight. Um, we're going to do a deep dive into the women's basketball season and talk about how the NCAA royally screwed them out of a tournament selection. Um, tonight's quote is, fuck the NCAA. That's right. Fuck them. Um, how are you, Vish? Yeah, not great, actually. Um, obviously, we didn't expect to. Uh, this show was supposed to be the uh, the um, the uh, breakdown of who we were going to Yeah, the breakdown yeah. of who we were playing, and instead, it's uh, you know we're going to be going through. Um, I don't even know what 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 to call. What we're going to do. It's going to be looking at the other teams that they let in, and I mean, yeah, that's the overarching theme. But we're going to be deep diving into some of the teams they. They let in because I, I do think there's an element of people saying, well, you know, they should have done this, they can't should have done that. And the reality is, as we'll get into in very great detail, you know, there was an uneven standard applied <laughs> across the board. I think that's the mm -hmm. like if there was a consistent standard that left the canes out, you can say, All right, you know, we there don't agree not, with it. We don't there, agree with it, but absolutely no rhyme or reason to them being left out of the tournament. First off. Hi to Daniel, always yeah, in the chat. What's yeah. up? And also, uh, before before we go if, negative, before we go I'm negative, I'm curious though. to know if he's ever here at the end. Yeah, come oh, the I end want Daniel to drop an adios at the end of our at the end of our stream to to and show you that you can't expect are. someone to stay here for like two and a half hours or whatever <laughs> our show is. That's not fair. But <laughs> when we do a normal length show, maybe. Um, yeah. But also, before we get into the negative stuff, shout out to Long Beach State. Um, go Beach. <laughs> Let's go. I, go I, still, I still actually don't know what their nickname is. Um, <laughs> but shout out to to, to Long Beach State. The uh, insert That's Matt's name. alma mater. They, it, they yeah, won their conference and the men won their conference and are yeah. going to be going to the NCAA tournament for like the first time since, what did Matt say? I, I think it was like 10 plus years. It's been a it's while. Been, it's been a long time. Yeah, they, they will be losing to Arizona in the first round, but still a great run. We did um I was just on maxed out on the Miami Flow network right before this and we did a quick like who did we think was going to come out of each region and we got to that region and I was like I really want to pick Long Beach State for Matt but I'm going to pick Arizona. You mean the the uh, the Long Beach State Beach program as he yeah. calls them. We will have matching program. hoodies though. Yeah, we will have matching hoodies. We will also I bought I bought I bought, I bought the co-hosts the three of us all Long Beach uh, basketball hoodies which which resulted in my credit card getting after the store is not used to people ordering the hoodies, so they called both of us to confirm it wasn't fraud. The girl even said, Oh, we get a lot of fraud, so we want to make sure that it's it, you actually ordered it. She just I told me it was because it was out of state. Um, 
Oh, I don't know. They confirmed it with me. See, they, that, they confirmed it with me too, and then my credit card company had a problem with it. So, <laughs> and, and that 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 kind of messed my evening up a little bit. But uh, but we shout persevered. out to our boy. Shout out to our boy Matt and his yes. alma mater making the NCAA mm-hmm. tournament. It's going to be a short run. Pro- if they beat Arizona, holy crap! But go still, beat. still an accomplishment there. Um, still an accomplishment, yeah, especially because and- they agreed to part ways with their. Well, I, if he was on Levitard on on yesterday yesterday it's only tuesday um and yeah he 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 kind of he got fired yeah he got fired he he but he coached like, but he coached the turn the, the yeah conference well well apparently what he had agreed to with the school was um you know okay i, I agree we might need a new direction new voice let's wait till the tournament's over see how we do and then we'll do, and then he just released a statement saying mutually agreed to part ways is what he so <laughs> <laughs> and then uh they asked him would you go back now because obviously he's like yeah <laughs> and he he was like would you go back to the girl that dumped you or something so it was very much not a mutually agreed to part ways but uh he's he's moving on and moving up he took him to the tournament so there you go there you go also we will do a, a detail uh we have a show tomorrow night it's matt myself and a couple other guys that i don't know that matt knows um, that'll are we'll gonna be, do a bracket uh, breakdown, yeah. Do a bra- bracket breakdown, so stay tuned for those network. I'm All I right, work Melissa. tomorrow, otherwise, I would also be there. But yeah, oh, well, we'd probably be doing buckets tomorrow, actually, if because Matt would be there too. We would do three. Are we doing tomorrow. one Thursday? I think we landed on no because Matt, Matt's got like Matt takes the ed- so. We're all basketball fans, obviously, and, and oh we'll, no, we're we'll, not because he wants to watch the games. Yeah, well, Melissa, Melissa and I are are basketball fans that are that are Miami here, and then everything else like four yeah. million people out. So once that's my, like that's like everything. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely Miami's at the top, but then yeah. right under it is like all the other. So he's got like watch party. He can't. He's got watch parties at his house and stuff. And Melissa and I are like, yeah, we'll totally do the show during the during the tournament games. And Matt's like, oh. Uh, well, this is what you got to understand. I, obviously, the men's season was really disappointed, but like I was expecting to come on here and be like, all right, the women, you know, we're going to be in the tour. Who are we playing? What's the outlook for the for for that bracket? Can we get back to the lead eight? Like, who are we expecting to step up? And instead, we're just we're here. To, we're going to be talking about how they got royally snubbed um, and had and I mean, played pretty much as well as they did last season, if not better. So I, I just, and I was at work during selection Sunday. And so Vish is texting me updates and we got to the final side of the bracket reveal and we both knew it was coming because of what was left. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, we should probably walk through that before we talk about some of the teams that were let in. So actually the first thing, if you look back at our text, um, the first thing I saw that kind of worried me a little bit was North Carolina got an eight seed. Um, and they were projected as a six, seven. So I'm like, okay, they've they're clearly like undervaluing the ACC over where the teams were projected to land. So that was kind of the first thing that was like that if they're an eight, that's not great. Um, and then you started to see teams like that we're gonna get into a little bit like AM and Columbia and Vanderbilt get in. You're like, okay, there's no yeah. there's now no room for us. Um and that that is essentially what had happened. There was there was, there was no room for us because they had uh, they'd given spots to teams, so which we're going to talk about. Just here. to just to preface all of this, so the last bracket prediction by ESPN that was done on Sunday at four fifty five p.m. Selection Sunday was at what eight? Yeah, it was at eight. So three hours and five minutes, ironically, before. Um, Selection, selection, the selection show, they put out their final bracket predictions, okay? They had Columbia as a first four out. They had AM and Vanderbilt as a last four in in play-ins in the first four. And they had Miami as a last four by along with Auburn. So they had Miami as a 10 seed. They had Auburn as an 11 seed. And then they had Texas A&M and Vanderbilt as 11 seeds, but in play-in games. All right. Yeah, and I would say for some some more discussion around that around that they said the Canes are firmly in the field, mm-hmm. you know, chance to potentially they might be higher than they've seeded them, but you know this is kind of the floor. 
They said we were firmly in the field before the ACC tournament, and then we still got a win against yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, and and again, that was that was kind of the the commentary was that North Carolina win. They're basically a lock now. I think in the bubble breakdown, they asked, should be in, um, and then said, you know, the tendency that they're in is kind of the floor. They could move up, could be higher than that. They won't be lower than this. Boy, were they wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, uh, anyway, so let's yeah. let's first i think we should talk about like the most heinous one yeah, that got here, in. Here, here we go we have graphics so uh we well, not graphics. graphics not real graphics i have Excel. this might be the most show prep that we've ever done <laughs> i have a computer show. program okay now we're not gonna say we're not gonna say who's who it's pretty freaking obvious though it, it's probably obvious but so on the a side you've got a net rate of 51 and the other team 57 strength of schedule 56 versus 102 the average opponent net rank one side's higher than the other you look at a is stronger than c on every single level like Correct. c has no net wins in the top 25 only one in the top 50 a has four the conference strength of schedule 40 to 111 all right so team a is higher in every single category than team c guess who got into the tournament Team C. Yeah, and 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 this is why one of the reasons we're upset because this is just not fair. Um, and there's there's nothing here to explain why C would get and, in the way. And this is also where I wanted to address another point um, that we keep. You know, we've obviously been talking about this on Twitter and been getting feed comments back. Um, and one of the comments is, "Well, win your games then." Explain to me, looking at this, well, well, hold on, just explain to me, looking at this, how many more games do you have to win for them to conclude that the team in column A is more worthy than the team in column C? How many more wins? How much more do those numbers need to move? Honest question. If you're going to say win more games, answer that, otherwise shut up. Because I'm sick of that statement when... This is a comparison. It's always a comparison. Yeah, no, idiots on it's Twitter. Not, there's not, there's not, there's yeah. not a hard and fast metric of you do this, you're in. There are no rules. It is a comparison. These are idiots the things on Twitter that are like, oh, you were you were eight and ten in conference. You need to win more conference games. I I, I mean, eight other t teams in the conference made the tournament. How many more games would you like us to win? But again, literally, I think Team C's best win is a win in their conference. But one again, one team that literally did not beat any other tournament bound team besides that one team. And then they lost to that team in their conference tournament, in their conference tournament. At home by 17 points. So, at home by 17 points. But, so just, but, just just to make this clear, team A is Miami, team C is Columbia. Right. And and but I think I think the, the operative thing here is if you're looking at this as the committee and you're saying we are putting team C in anyway. Then just tell Team A you just need to win more games. There was no way these stats were going to move in a way that they were going to pick Team A over Team C. None. Like they were going to put Columbia in because if you're looking at this and you're concluding, yes, we're going to put Columbia in with with the with another win against the top twenty five or the top fifty to make it five to one instead of four to one, is that going to make the difference? No. So Does our okay. top five win against NC State not speak for itself? Does a win against UNC, who was in and out of the rankings all year, a win against Duke, who was in and out of the rankings all year? Like, I don't understand what we well, beat Jackson State, who won their tournament, won their conference tournament. Yeah, that's going. So, like, so I think I think overall, the the Canes played thirteen. Um, they played thirteen conf uh, teams that ended up in the tournament. Um, Columbia played four. Three of those games were against Princeton. They lost two of those by a combined 32 points. And they won one by two points. And they also lost to Duke at a conference. That's their four games they played against tournament teams. But again, I think this the uh the um shout to Nate. Princeton, um, Princeton is their best win. Cause like the only yeah, other team no, they is, played it, was Duke. Right. They played point, they, they played they played Who four. We beat. Right. I mean, we'd be we, we, I mean, you don't want to necessarily do the the, well, uh, listen. the transit of property, but but all I'm saying is, when you say you should win more games, that assumes that anyone is actually paying attention to who's winning what. Because again, making another a fifth win, like the Canes played Virginia Tech, 
in the quarterfinals of the SEC tournament. If they'd won that, it would be three wins against the one to twenty five instead of two. You think that was going to change the decision here? It's they're, they're, they don't care, and I think that's the point when you say, and that's the frustrating part, and that's why we're complaining because so we when had, the numbers are this lopsided, to say yeah. win more games doesn't make sense because all that's example, going to do also, is like you don't need will, to make the gap bigger. I will point out we had thirteen games against tournament bound teams this season, including the ACC tournament. Columbia had they had four, four, it's, it's three, points and they, and one, they one. lost three of the four yeah, of them. That number already. And they lost three of the four of them. All right. We beat one, two, three, four tournament teams and kept it close for the most part with the other ones. Oh, there's a couple of bad ones, but those those teams like literally Notre Dame won the ACC. Virginia Tech is a top 10 team. NC, well, we beat NC State. Um, Louisville is a top 20 team. So, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not sure what. You, where you look at this and you look at their schedules and you say, oh, Columbia is more deserving. Well, they're not. And I think that's the point. There's no way to spin it they, that they way. They did it because they wanted the first time team. We're going to get to that in a second, I think. But like, I, so I, I I think this should hopefully address the whole, well, you got to win more if you want to. They did win more. They won significantly more than the team they led in. So it's saying that you need to widen this already massive gap where there isn't a single metric you can look at that shows Columbia ahead on anything is an absurd claim. It's like saying any team could be left out. You should have gone undefeated. Like they could have and, left, and, they could have left out a number one seed. They could have left out Texas and, and said, well, if you've gone undefeated, you'd be in like, I mean, what also are we, doing here? Out, we did beat Mississippi state at Mississippi state when they were ranked. I mean, at, Mississippi at, state also got snubbed. Well, sort of, I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's a whole thing we're going to talk about there. Yeah. But I mean, I, the thing at the, at the time stuff doesn't, because you know, you can overrate yeah. teams. But we're looking at the, the the same numbers the committee looks at. And just across the board, Columbia is significantly worse. So, again, saying that the Canes need to improve their resume doesn't make sense. Because you can't widen a gap that's already so wide. The gap is being ignored. It does not matter how much you, you widen this gap here. They were going to let Columbia in. And Melissa pointed this out earlier. Um, if you want to know why Columbia was let in. That's the committee chairman on the right. Does she look pleased that while she's talking about how Columbia made the tournament for the first time? This is a travesty. That 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 is the committee chairman. Wow, the fuck sign makes an appearance. That that committee chairman is behaving like that, gleefully, not justifying Columbia in at all. Just saying, first time. That is. I mean, kudos to them. I'm sure they're thrilled. They showed videos of them celebrating, all that stuff. It's not fair, and it's supposed to be a neutral committee decision. They clearly let them in because it was the first time in. And you could tell because she's not even hiding it. One of the things that happens, unfortunately, you know, the coverage of women's sports isn't there yet because if the men, if they'd done this, like the committee chairman would have gotten ripped to shreds. The the bracket show for the women didn't even mention who the bubble teams were, who the last four out in, who the first four out were. And so, oh, we're gonna get this, Nate. I have a nugget on this. But uh, <laughs> but um um there, like there, there, there's an unbelievable on, there's an I unbelievable like we, honestly, I feel like we should have just brought him on. There's an unbelievable nugget around around the uh around the the, the pro wrestling aspect of this, which I'm gonna talk about later. But this is this is why Columbia was let in, because they were like, you know what? They're kind of close, and they're never made before, and they'll probably never make it again. Let's put them in. That's not fair to the teams that played better, that worked harder, and that that worked as hard. I mean, all these kids work hard, but there's teams that perform better on the court, and it's supposed to be a um, um, a meritocracy. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the thing. Not only didn't have the courage to call the chair out, there wasn't even a show discussion about this. They went to the chair. They asked her how they determined a one seed, and then they ended the interview. Then they interviewed and, Don Staley, and then they ended the show. 
And can we quickly mention that the WBIT just assumed Miami was well, going to Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that after this. That's the next in the, <laughs> after this discussion. We're going to get to that shit show um, and how they handled it, too, beyond Vish, that. Vish was about to book a flight. <laughs> I know. I, I, even, I mean, I'll tell you. I told Coach I was coming, and then I saw the thing, and I was like, never mind, Coach. <laughs> so, wait. Let's, can we talk about the SEC real quick? Yeah, here. I, 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 I pivoted yeah. to it. I'm on top of things. So – Vish, just to point out, because Nate's in the chat, I want to say, like, as much as me and you were talking about this, like, after Selection Sunday, I don't know how I managed to do this and work at the same time. Like, I, my phone was literally going to turn off because it was overheated. Um, but as much as I was texting with you, I was texting with Nate. Like, the the anger just coming from the three of us was insane. Well, I think it's it's multifold. We talked about, like, they couldn't get away with this in another – as, as popular as, as women's basketball has become, the mm-hmm. idea that what we were talking about happened, and not only did it happen, there was no discussion of it on the post-game show, on the the, uh, the bracketology show they did afterwards where the men and women were mixed when they asked, like, yeah, Miami got screwed. And that was it. There was no... And and actually, the, the interview that I, that I pulled this photo from of her clearly enjoying the hell out of her out of her decision to screw Miami over and put Columbia in for the first time. That is an interview with someone that works for the NCAA that they released at 1145 at night. Like, I mean, this is not covered correctly and they avoid the scrutiny that the men's committee did. Like as much as like I heard endlessly about St. John's, I didn't hear crap about this and this is way worse. And, and so, I mean, that's part of this is they can get away with it because, um, because the, the scrutiny is not there yet. It is at the top. People know Kate and Cart. People know South Carolina. The sport is growing and popular, which is great. But it still does not get the scrutiny top to bottom that the men's game gets. And, and you know, the men's show does center. The discussion centers around who got left out, what was done fairly, what was done unfairly. It's not even mentioned on the women's show. Um, and so because of that, they can do things like, I mean, we showed the resumes. Columbia has no business being in this tournament. And, and not only did they did the did they only play, they played two tournament teams. They just played one of them three times. Yep. Not only did they only win the one game by two points, they lost by 15 at Princeton. And they hosted the Ivy League tournament. They got Princeton on their home floor, played them on Saturday, lost by 17. They got blown out at home. And they just the committee was like, forget it, they're in anyway because they had to put because because of this. That's why they put them in because of this. Oh, we're gonna get to Texas A and M. That's next. That's why yes, we have the that's SEC. Next. That's that's next. So two other SEC teams that got in instead of us was um, Auburn or not Auburn Vanderbilt and no, there's um, three. There's three because Auburn, Auburn Vanderbilt, and Texas A and M, and they left out Mississippi State. Um. Yeah, so if, if, people, if people want to say, oh, well, you didn't finish 500 in conference, whatever, Texas A&M went 6-10. and 10. They do not have a single ranked win on their tournament resume. Not a single one. 6-10. Um, and 10. Their best win was Tennessee, yeah, who, and, who and, went and, into the tournament. And Nate asked a question that we'll never get the answer to. How, How can, can you be, be four, four games under 500 in a week of conference and be in? It's a really good question, especially when you don't have a single ranked win on your resume. Oh. Oh, we we will we will we will add to this because Vanderbilt finished nine and seven in that conference. And when asked the committee chairman to describe why Vanderbilt got in off the bubble because they had a winning conference record, was her answer, which was clearly a shot at us because we won eight and ten in the ACC, which is better. Well, 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 which is one, as Nate said, eight and ten in the ACC is better than nine and seven in the SEC. It's a much stronger conference. Two, you let A and M in at six and ten, and didn't even make them play a play-in game. So, all of a sudden, in fact, this is the this is the most infuriating part. So, the beginning of that—that's about a five-minute video, which is all we get for women's coverage. Um, the beginning was her describing how they determine the one seeds. They said she goes literally spends thirty seconds talking about how it's impossible to use conference record as a metric because even within the conference, which happens to us too. Um, and it happens in the SEC and all these conferences with a million teams in it. Just like even within the conference, like their teams are playing different opponents. So like one team might be eight and eight, the other team might be nine and seven, but the eight and eight team might have played a much more difficult schedule in the same conference. So she's like, you can't really look at that. Then immediately when that's what the bubble teams, well, we looked at the conference record. 
What a, meanwhile, it's meanwhile, like, it's like we're SEC, taking crazy pills. Well, wait. Meanwhile, the SEC has two ranked teams at the end of the season. Two. I think the ACC had five, six, um, five. More. I'll tell you that. We're, we're, we're doing some live scrolling here. Um, Keep going. Atlantic. I know. I'm scrolling. A lot of bigs. There we go. Five. Five. Yeah, no, it's a tougher conference. The Canes were better in the conference. You can see here, the Canes had two ranked wins. The um, we're going back to the SEC section. The three SEC teams they let on let in off the bubble combined for for one ranked win. Just Auburn. The Canes had more than all three of those teams combined. But wait, there's more. So Melissa mentioned Mississippi State and how they finished eight in the SEC um, and didn't well, get I will, I will. I will say Auburn had one ranked win against LSU. They then proceeded to lose to them twice after that. And Auburn lost to Vanderbilt and Texas A&M. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, but we're talking about like a cross comparison, right? Yeah, so no, I'm first, saying. Like, so just, just to be clear, the, exp the explanation we heard so far were – you know, from the committee chair was Vanderbilt got in because they, they had a con winning conference record, which they do. So, again, we tried – even if we don't agree with decisions, we try to logically break them down. So had they left A&M out and put Mississippi State in instead and said, you know, the Canes weren't in because they didn't finish 500, neither was A&M, at least you could look at and say some logical consistency is there. Now, why couldn't they do that? Well, we, if you recall, the Canes went into Starkville. One of us was there and blew out Mississippi State in Starkville. So they could not put Mississippi State in in front of Miami, which is why Texas A&M leapt in there from 6 and 10, because as, as Nate said, they reverse engineered the bracket narrative. Magically, the ACC and SEC ended up with the same number of teams. Um, we know where the money is, and we know where the relationship with the TV is and with the committee is. It's with the SEC. So they actually let in Vanderbilt, Auburn, and Texas A&M were three of like the last five teams in the field. They all got in, and then and then Miami was the last team out. Magically, it ended up being no. Miami was the first team out. Yeah, sorry, first team out. Yeah, um, they were the 69th team. Nice, um, not nice this time though. Um, and I mean, and, if you're a Mississippi State fan, you got to be pissed. Also, I mean, well, Mississippi State got caught up in it because Mississippi State cannot be in and over Miami. So if they put Mississippi State in, they have to put Miami in, which means they either have to put nine SEC teams in to keep it even and boot out two other no, double teams. Texas A&M doesn't deserve to be there. No, but they can't do that, Melissa, because, again, you're not understanding. you got to have more SEC teams. Or the same, right? Or so the if same. they put a ninth ACC team in, they need to put a ninth SEC team in, which means that they need to put Miami and Mississippi State in. They need to boot out two more bubble teams. So not just Columbia, someone else had to go. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the truth is the Canes have better resumes than all of these teams if you look across the statistics. But if you pick any of the metrics and say these are the two most important, the three most important, they might fall behind. For example, if you say conference record is the most important, you know, they fall behind some of these teams. They don't find fall behind all of them. There's but no way. There's no way to slice and dice. You could argue, hey, this team should be a higher seed than Miami using this logic, and you can make that case on some of these. But if you do that, then use that same logic. It means, well, Miami's still in. But you can also, but you could also make the case, and obviously we're a biased show because we're Miami fans. But this is pure fact. You take these three SEC teams we just talked about plus Columbia, and you compare their overall tournament resume with Miami. Miami is the best out of all five teams. Right. That's not, it's well, not actually, it's there, actually there's not no, there, there's no question about it. If you want to nitpick one, one statistic that maybe one, that one team has over Miami, you can say, oh, well, Vanderbilt has a better conference record. That's all you can say. The strength of schedule for Miami is definitely better. You look at the ACC overall as a conference, it is much stronger than the SEC. I understand they have South Carolina and LSU, but after that, it plummets. Um, right. But I think, I think the point is, even if you take, you, you look at some of the, you can look at, like for Columbia and Miami, the reason we showed the whole thing is because it's literally there isn't a single. It's statistic. pure obvious, right? So yeah. that's that's just nonsense. But yeah, you could certainly like you could make the case that any of these teams, if you want to look at certain metrics, are, are higher than Miami. The, the the problem is 
if you say, okay, this is what's important, and you apply it across all the teams, Miami still Miami gets in. Yeah. The only way that, that they're completely out of the turn is if you say, well, for A&M, we're looking at, uh, frankly, I don't even know. They have no. I, I, there's no explanation. There's <laughs> yeah. honestly no explanation. Yeah, but there's no explanation there. No. Maybe, but if you want to, if you know, if you want to look at certain things and say, well, for this, this number matters, that number matters, you know, you can probably piece something together. Well, for uh, instance, for instance, Vanderbilt and Auburn. Oh, at least 500 in the SEC. Okay. For A and M in Columbia, there there's absolutely no there's no explanation for why either of those teams got in over Miami. There's none. Find me a number. There's none. Right, and I think and and um <clears throat> and that that's where you get into the you know that's where the complaints and the snubs come in and the term snubs come in because well it's easy to to you know to knee jerk and say oh win more games do this do that. When you're already significantly ahead on the numbers the committee says is important, the numbers the committee is saying, this is how we seeded the team, and you go look those numbers up, and it's like, uh, Miami's better on these numbers, then I don't know exactly how many more wins you thought the Canes would need to have for them to actually care, because they didn't care Can you that the resume the was Columbia strong. Can you pull up stats again yep. while we're talking about this? Yep, 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 yep. But this, I, as, as we're talking about this, I just want to see like the glaring, like yeah, no, this this is egregious. And, it, and, like, and again, this is this is the this is the point though, right? Is that when you're doing when the committee is looking at things like what we're looking at on the screen again, if you're if you're listening to the audio, it's basically a bunch of numbers that show the Canes are significantly better than mm -hmm. Columbia across every metric. But if the committee is looking at this and saying, you know what, we're going with Columbia anyway, there's no amount of winning that was going to change that. Because they didn't care, and I think that's the frustrating part. That's why we're upset. Look, we understand Miami's not the first, and they won't be the last team to get snubbed, um, and that's the reality of it. But it's the, not the, close. Yeah, that's, that, the, that's the thing. It's not it's, close. It's not even close. Well, I think it's two things. It's it's that it was not close. Is that an explanation was not given? It was just the commission mm -hmm. going Columbia's in for the first time, and I, I think that is the frustrating part because it was very clear that they didn't take a neutral view of this. They did not. Nate says they reverse engineered it. They absolutely did. But they also just didn't even, I mean, sometimes the numbers are too overwhelming to ignore. And this is, this is certainly, you know, one of those instances. Uh, yeah, no, they, they had their mind map. The SEC will get theirs. And then Columbia got in because they were the first time in, but I can tell you right now, like, they were not putting Miami in there because they were not going to have more ACC teams than yeah. SEC teams. So there was no amount of winning other than winning the ACC tournament that was going to do it. And I think people need to understand that. And that's the, that's the part that's upsetting because it's fine to say you should win more games. You should have done this. You should have done that. Every team can say that at any point if you've been left out of the tournament, right? The problem is when you're comparing teams and one is clearly better across the numbers – saying win more games assumes that anyone's even looking because they weren't and that that's unacceptable if you look at what's on the screen right now and say we're going with with the team with all of the worst numbers what exactly is the, the team with the better numbers got to do why did to, we to even play a but why did we even play a season at this point yeah, like this I is mean, so glaringly obvious like just like pure incompetency by the committee why did we even bother well, playing this season? Well, I mean, incompetence means... No, it is they, incompetency. Look no, at the numbers. Not, no, no, it's not There's incompetence. There's nothing there that says, oh, Listen, Team C is better than Team it's, A. It's not incompetence, okay? And, and I'll tell you why. Because no one could be this stupid. This is, this is intentional. Incompetence actually lets them off the hook. It assumes that they somehow could not tell. That's not what happened here. They let them in because they'd never been in before. They were kind of close. They're like, let's do them a solid. This ain't make a wish, man. It's competitive athletics. It's no, so no, it's and that's it's it's not because again, it's intentional. No, it's intentional incompetency. It's bad faith. Yeah, yeah, it's malice. <laughs> malice. No, because incompetence means like they didn't know any better. They knew better. They looked at this, and that's what I'm saying. Five. Let's say the Canes won two more games, getting this up to six. Six wins, is that enough? Seven wins, is that enough? To beat the one by two points at home randomly against Princeton, the only one that they had? How many more do they have, how much more do you have to increase the gap before it's enough? How many their, be their best win was against Princeton. Yeah, by two. Our our best win was against a top and, five uh power conference team, and we won by double digits.
And I think this is the this is the problem when you've already it's like I mean here, here's an analogy, right? You get a 95 on your test and your teacher gives you a C and someone else gets an 80 and they give them an A. And you said, "Well, you should have gotten 100." Like I don't know what to do with that. Does that going to matter? Why did I get a C for a 95 in the first place? Why is getting 100 going to change that? That's what people said in the Kane should have. Yes, they could have won more games. Yes, it would have been great if they won. It would have been great if they went undefeated. They'd be the one seed overall. I mean, they all, could be all, to a lot all, of games. Well, we wouldn't have to travel that much because they'd be in Miami. But but I mean, also but I will say, is a, is literally, a, literally, me and Vish were discussing about possibilities of where we could travel to next weekend, depending on when the Canes were going to play. Like we were that confident. I was on Coach Hayes last week, and someone asked me how why I was confident that the Canes were going to make it, and I gave all of these reasons. That in our minds, there was no doubt. Yeah, no, that that's 100%. our win over Jackson State would easily be there. It, it is would easily. Yeah, but let's be real. If we drop Columbia into the ACC, they'd be the worst team there. So I mean, I I don't even like this is not. It's a nonsense um, decision to include them. We know why the committee chairman showed us. But it's but honestly, like we can sit here and be angry as fans. But it's honest. It's honestly like we're very we cover the team, so we're very invested in these players. We've had coach on twice. She's named the show. We love this team, and for them to not be able to participate in March when they've obviously earned it, it it's really disappointing, especially for Jada Patrick. Like this was her last season. This was her chance to like she she hadn't played in the in the tournament. I don't think. No, she hadn't because she yeah. transferred from Columbia. Who she never transferred made it from before, Columbia. So she was she was actually <laughs> super happy on Instagram for them when Columbia got announced. She was like, I mean, she obviously turned it off like right after. But like, it's just disappointing for a team where everyone's expecting to get well, in. Well, I they think had a watch party. ESPN had a live look in camera at the facility. Right. Like it was assumed that they were going to get in, and yeah, for man, all of I... the hard work that they've put in throughout the season. For them to be obviously in in every single projection and then to get snubbed for teams that have worse numbers by far than them, it's absolute it's absolutely ridiculous it's and outrageous. disappointing. And it's it, it it's outrageous. It's 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 horrible. It's one like, of those things, yeah. And again, like the projections can obviously be wrong. Like all those things can you know, the reason we're Melissa is of course right. We're personally invested in this is our team. We cover them. We're close with the team more so than any other team on campus. We're close with the women's basketball team. So I think I think we're so more. So this we we than yeah we we took than anything else. Yeah, than There's anything else on campus. Concerned. Well, yeah. I think generally speaking, I would say across our network, mm -hmm. we have the, a better relationship with the women's basketball team than yeah. anyone else. So look, we are taking it personally, and that's why we're getting emotional about it and upset about it. And I always I I tweet this. I always try to look at things and say, okay. I don't agree with this, but what is the rationale? There should be some rationale for it, right? And I'm looking, and, and and I think the frustrating thing here is there is none you can apply that if if applied fairly would have the Cades not playing this weekend. And so, um, and that's the frustrating thing. Yeah, and it's it's awful for the team that worked out. Look, all these teams work hard, right? Like Columbia worked really hard to get near the tournament, but they just weren't good enough. Like they were just worse than the Canes on every metric. It's a comparison. And for them to get in and not Miami, you know, good for them. You know, it's the first time the program's in. They were obviously very excited about it, but we got screwed here. And they show that they and 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 the committee chairman can laugh about it and think it's it's awesome that they're a first time participant. And they can show the video of them celebrating in shock because they knew they weren't going to get in until they got in all of a sudden. Um, and that's all fine. Like Melissa said, show the camera of Miami, the team that earned it, not getting in. You didn't do that. Because you screwed them and you pretended they didn't exist in the entire show after that. And it's, and there is and there's it's no just, it, it it it's even and then honestly, like yeah, we're disappointed our team didn't get in, but it's it's even worse because like we said, it's not even close. Right. And that's the thing. Like we we like we, it's it's a it's blatantly just leaving out a team because of favoritism. No, it's not. They've been underseeded several times. I mean, I think it's worth it's worth noting. Um, Melissa and I talk a lot about the ACC tournament a few years ago, and you know, Destiny Hard led that comeback against Louisville. Um, that Canes team, Louisville was a one seed in the NCAA tournament that year. They went to the finals of the ACC tournament, and you know, took NC State down to the wire, who was also a one seed. The ACC had two one seeds that year. Got sent to South Carolina. 
like normally the Canes don't get screwed out of the tournament. They get seated poorly. I mean, the men have been perpetually seated poorly. We saw last year. 2012-2013 was the worst screwing of a seating for the men's basketball team that I've ever seen in my entire life. But that's a whole nother story. Yeah, no, they became the first ACC double, team. Double dipped the ACC and didn't get a one seed, but yeah. we won't go into that. Yeah, so they're, they're, these programs are perpetually under seed. This is the first time that I can remember just – I mean, there wasn't really even a question. And actually, we talked about – we talked about this in, in our chat before, like the weekend's games. And I pointed out the. Uh, oh, we talked about this yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, we've actually, um, when I wrote about the team last year, I talked about how like this team was, this is after they finally made the sweet 16. I kind of went through some of what they had to overcome. And, and this is certainly one of them as a three seed getting sent to play at Gonzaga as the 11 seed is, is ridiculous. Um, and of course, they flew cross country and lost that game. Um, but you know, it's a t- we're perpetually underseeded. I mean, for baseball fans, you'll recall the last the year the streak ended um, of consecutive NCAA tournaments. The Canes were also magically the last team, the first team out um, of that when they had stronger resumes than the teams that were in because they had an opportunity. Because the Canes baseball is usually hosting and clearly end to the point you can't leave them out. That time they were on the bubble, and guess what magically happened? So, you know, this is kind of a – it's a perpetual thing. Um, and it, it it's just – this is this is pretty egregious. And obviously we covered the team, so we're going to talk about it. And if people want to say, just move on. To what? There's no games left, dummy. <laughs> they it, took it, the season it, away. It's hard, too, because we had the show planned, like – last week like after we after we finished the acc tournament we were discussing like oh vish was texting me like what day are you off let's plan to talk about selection sunday to to break down our bracket like this has been planned since the end of the acc tournament we knew we were going to do a show to talk about talk about where we were going kane's cat heat um we have a baseball show you yeah, know he's, he's network, he is so. he is the most avid watcher of that yeah um we will be on thursday yeah, but shout yeah, out I think he's, he's talking about he's talking about he's talking about he's talking about my comment like when people yeah. are like you should just move. I was like, what should we move on? He's got the little. No, know. he's trying. Yeah, 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 we know, we know. Um, yeah, there is a baseball show. Kane's no, Cats but... Heat, Kane's Cats Heat will be one of our one of our OGs that comes on our on our our fan show. Yeah, uh, once we're, up soon, now that the season's once, over. that is going to come up soon. <laughs> we just we just need some time to decompress. Yeah. Um Well, I guess should I just announce who it's going to be? I mean, I'm assuming they're all going to want to. No, we should check first. Let's not put anyone on the spot. Well, I know, them. I know, three of the four do. I, I let's not do that yet. <laughs> okay. Um, but Kane's cat seat's going to be one of them. Yes, yes, he will. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's, it's unfortunate. The season's over. Um, you know, <clears throat> yeah, it's one of those things we're not going to forget. No. So because because but I, just, I would like I would like to make a mockery over the WBIT. Yeah, so just let me let me walk walk us through this. So, um, so for those that aren't aware, in women's basketball, there's a new tournament this year called the WBIT, which replace well, it doesn't actually replace the WNIT. The WNIT just becomes the third tournament. If you follow men's, you've heard of like the CBI. It's the equivalent of that for the NIT. So now the WBIT is a new tournament, and um, <clears throat> the the Within first like four, twenty minutes. Right. Well, the first four teams left out of the NCAA tournament um, automatically or the top four seeds in the WBIT, which means you host the first three rounds. Um, and so, of course, like you said, within about 20 minutes of the bracket being released and Miami being screwed, of course, Miami was the first team out. So they are announced as the number one overall seed in the WBIT. It may first not thing, even have been 20 minutes. Yeah, so they tweet it out. They do a whole bracket show. Released a bracket with Miami's the number one overall seed. We were playing Stony Brook on Thursday for all of Stony about Brooks. Some radio account tweeted that they were coming to Miami. Yeah, no, but that's because they had so that they were doing the announcements in parallel to that. I saw that first, and then I realized, yeah. oh, they're actually announcing the bracket. Yeah. So I saw them announce the bracket. Yeah, we we you know we were gonna host three games. Me and Vish were planning on what. Yeah, games I was like, can I fly down on Wednesday night? I was t- I, I sent Coach Meyer messages like, I'm coming down for this. This sucks, but I want to be there to support you guys. And then all of a sudden, they release they tw- a new bracket. Well, 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 first they tweet out, Congratulations to our number one seed, James Madison. 
who wasn't and, even in the well, tournament well, at the all thing, originally. This is the thing. <laughs> then they delete the bracket and just upload a new one and tweet out what James Mass is the number one overall seed to Melissa's point. They weren't even in the tournament. Rather than redo the whole bracket, they just swapped them in from Miami, who obviously declined the invite. And how they and didn't bother to, to check. Him. How about they – yeah, well, I mean, Coach <laughs> likes me. I think it's fine. But um, talk about, like, just, you don't even do the barest of – the NCAA is such a shit show. When they weren't busy, like, fucking the bracket up and screwing us over, they're over here. Check. They didn't even bother to, like, reach out to, like, the – to. to, to well, all they do is ask, you know, I mean, we know the contacts. I'm not going to say their names here, but I could have told you you could have texted and gotten an answer in two minutes. Like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> Because on our assumption is they announced it, so we assume. Yeah, Miami no, said- I mean, once they announced it, you're like, okay, I guess we did. So did we're it, like, so. oh, I'm like, oh, I'm off next weekend. Vish is looking at flights. Like, we're trying to figure it out. Yeah, He's like, I oh, know. I hope it's not an afternoon game, like a 2.30 game, because I have to work. And like, that's the whole thing. So you assume they announce it, and then they literally have to go back and delete all of this stuff, and then they just pull in. No some explanation. Other team. No explanation for None. anything. They but just yeah. tried to pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah, and but now James Madison, who was not good enough to make the field of the WBIT, is now hosting a one seed. Well, they're they're one seed, seed, and they will be hosting three rounds of the tournament if they get far enough. Unbelievable, unbelievable amateur hour, all the way around. Good job. Good job, NCAA. Just the whole thing, the whole sequence of events. You screwed us out of the tournament with a stronger resume than I think looking through the data, we obviously focused on a few teams. There were there were five, there were five teams that the Canes clearly had better numbers just across the board than we've talked about a few of them here. <laughs> Actually, one of the ones that's a little bit closer is Mississippi State, but of course, since the Canes won in Starkville, they couldn't do that. Um, and then You know, after that, they just screwed up the WBIT announcement, too. So, really, just fantastic job all the way around. And, you know, way to go. It's just a fantastic performance. Just unbelievable. I did not prepare for our Mount Rushmore. So I'm like, well, well, we still got we got other stuff to talk about. But we're not I know I'm, I'm gonna right. try. I'm gonna try and do research as we talk, so I have some ideas. All right, I think we're probably. I guess the last thing on the women before we pivot to the men. Um, I, she confirmed it, but I think Ali Stedman's in the portal. Looks like. Yeah. Um, Ali said, uh, as far as portaling for the women, Ali Stedman has hit the portal. I don't. I don't want to speak for Vish, but I don't think we're necessarily shocked. But we are. No, her her role diminished. And actually, Nate. Nate actually himself talked about. You know, mm-hmm. she was probably this is towards the end of the season. She's probably a portal candidate just as her as her playing time diminished. She was never she was never in the rotation like fully. She would come on sparingly. She played great defense for us, but her offensive game never really picked up because there was just no consistency of playtime. I think if she lands in the right situation, she can have a really great senior season. Yeah, so, and I think um, I think the other thing that that hurt her was when we decided to go with two bigs, um, which we finished the season with for I think the last five or six games and through the tournament. Um, that just took away another you know, that took away playing time yeah. for another wing and that that ate into what her role would have been. And with three guards coming in next season. Yeah, yeah. It's, and and the, the Canes do have a top 10 recruiting class for women. So a lot of talent. Well, actually, it there. depends where you look. On some sites, we're now 12. It's a top 10. According to the NCAA, if you look at our conference record, I don't know. I don't know where oh, that the NCAA go. probably thinks it's like a top 50 because yeah, they – Yeah, it doesn't number. count. It doesn't count. Um. But anyway, yeah, so that, unless you have anything else on the, uh, I mean, no, again, this is not, start. this is not one, this isn't, I, I, just, I think this is, you know, I think just to close the conversation off, this was as much as we're invo- emotionally invested in in the team and we're close to the team and we've been, we've not hid that, obviously, we're a freaking show with the orange and green all over it, named by the coach. Um, you know, this, that does not diminish the fact that this was unfair um, and, illogical to the point that you can't they have no one's even barred to try and explain it with any but kind of consistent metric i i, I do want to say first of all um thank you to jada patrick uh and sophia as well i know she came in mid-season yeah, Zula, yeah. Yeah. just shout out to our seniors jada was uh pretty much like was a starter for us all year played great i thought i said it throughout the season that i thought she was really underrated and didn't get a lot of credit for the things that she did 
Um, obviously a, a tournament worthy team. Um, it, we're all disappointed that, that it came down to such illogical nonsense, but um, shout out to coach for another incredible season. We can't wait to see what you guys do next year and just congratulations to the team in general, everybody. Um, you guys are great. And I hope all of you come back. I, I want to see everybody back next year. So I know Allie's leaving, but I hope everybody else stays and good luck to Ali. Uh, I'm a fan. So I'll be rooting for you wherever you go. Yeah. Well said. And yeah, congratulations to not just coach Meyer, but the whole staff to do a great yeah. job over there. We obviously, again, we're, we're close to that program. So we know how hard everyone works over there and you know, this sucks. But the uh, everything you know, the team will be back next year. You all deserved. You all deserved better than they, they, what they deserve you better. Had. But you know, we'll we'll be back better, yeah. better that next year. And uh, you know, hopefully we we grow stronger from this. It's not wasn't fair. They got screwed. Um, you can't undo that. You can only you know move forward. And I know Coach Meyer will move this program forward. And um, like we say, like like Melissa said, we have a really strong recruiting class coming and adding to a really strong talent base. Of, so the future is those, very bright. One of those recruits was on our show. Go back and check our <laughs> interviews out with uh, Leah Harmon, top 30 yep. player coming in um, on top of uh, two other top players coming in. Um, so really, really strong class um, and such a well-rounded team too. I, 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 another year of playing together and we keep, and we keep most of these guys, I think the team is going to be even more special and there won't be a question next year of whether or not they should be in the tournament. Cause they're going to be a, a, a good seed. Yeah. Well, apparently we have to go with the feed to make the tournament. So let's not make any uh, rash comments, Melissa, you know, I, I, just go yeah, win more I, games, bro. Go whatever, but yeah, <laughs> it's disappointing. But anyway, um, do we want? To Why talk can't about you go six and ten like A and M, huh? <laughs> do you want to talk about the men really quickly for five minutes? We're gonna we're gonna do a show with Matt where we talk more about the men. I think in we need world. to address him more than five minutes because he he's not. We're not doing a show this week. Well, I mean, next week we're going to talk about it. I more. mean, half, half our team, half our team entered the portal. We should probably talk about it. Games cat seats want to know how 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 does Nwoko have twenty offers out of the portal? Um, um they're not guys, they're not they're not really great ones to be honest. There's no like big. Well, it, 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 you just look at you just look at his match, his size and the potential in it. That's it. Well, anyway, but let's let's talk through this. So there were there there were there were several canes that entered entered the portal. Obviously. Four. For, and there's a fifth one that has told coach that is not as yet to reveal itself. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we'll start with the uh, the um, we'll start with the uh, you know the the ones that we First, expected, which were yeah. Watson, Christian Watson, AJ Casey. Um, I guess Melissa, any any uh, surprises? I'm not there? surprised. Um, I think we talked about it before the season that we expected a jump in their play. They obviously fell out of the rotation and kind of fell back into it because of injuries. Um, there, we, I mean, we were kind of hype on AJ over the summer when we when he played in Europe and we saw some of his stats. But th there's, they weren't going to get time here next season. I think it's best that both of them do transfer and, and try to um, fit into another system, get more playing time. Uh, it just didn't work out. It's it's not surprising at all. Um, I I don't know what you think about it, but yeah, I mean, no, I think those are the two we were kind of most sure we're going to transfer. So I don't think we and, questioned it. Yeah, and um, Pat Bev really we're going to call Bensley that now. Um, honestly, and, honestly, Nwoko is a surprise. Let's start with let's do Bensley. Bensley. Next. Bensley, I'm not surprised. I think did I say on the show I was 50-50, but I think he leaves. I think so. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. not surprised by Bensley. I I think I said I wouldn't be shocked if he stayed, but I wouldn't be shocked if he goes. And it's I think it's because he could easily fit into our into that six man role again. But I think he wants to go somewhere where he can start. He's been very solid for us off the bench, but having him and Nigel in the backcourt just didn't work together. And if Nigel stays in with Jaleel coming in, there was no way he was getting a starting spot on this team. So I'm not surprised by it. Um, I think out of the four Ben's leaving hurts the most just because of his, what he did for the program while he was here. Um, Nwoko was a surprise for me. I thought he was going to stay because I thought he was going to continue to. Well, develop under I mean, system. yeah, just, just on, on Bensley. Listen, we're going to spend more than five minutes on this. Like half I know. the team transferred. And I don't yeah. know why you're trying to, <laughs> to get through it in two minutes. 
the one started laughing when he heard me call him Pat. <laughs> well, um, maybe we can see what the one up. Um, do you ever get that year of eligibility back? He didn't, did he? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think Bensley is, I think he was destined to be a backup next year. And mm -hmm. I think our, our debate was kind of on whether or not he would accept that role or not. <laughs> the answer was no, obviously. I expect him to kind of go back to the Northeast. Um, and um, I would say go to a, not a mid-major, but a mid-power program. Mm -hmm. um, like, um, I, I think, uh, <coughs> um, you know, we're, we're probably maybe like a Big East team, but not like the top of, um, mm -hmm. not like they're stuck on like Connecticut or something like that. It'll be more of a mid-tier, you know, like maybe Providence. I don't think Georgetown, because Georgetown's terrible. I don't know why you want to go there, but... You know, yeah. that kind of thing. Something in the Northeast probably for him. It's it's the one that was – I think he was a player that was, frankly, most likely to contribute next year. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to get to Nwoko in a second because um, there's – No, he definitely would have been a contributor next year. No, but I think I said most likely. So, like, more yeah. so than – I mean, he does have a lot of experience throwing passes to BC I kind already. Of, so I, kind of, I kind of relate it to sort of, like, how – when we lost Harlan Beverly, like a really good role player that could give us some decent minutes. Although Bensley played a lot more than Beverly did. Yeah, well, I mean, he was a starter most this year. But, I mean, look, this is part of – we actually – I think this was on the show that Matt and I did after the BC game, which you, you were working. So then we did another show the next night. Um, we did talk about, hey, like, you know, some of these guys are going to be in the portal that you're like, oh, they should probably come – they're going to be in the portal – because there's opportunities out there, there's people in their ear, and when you have a season as bad as the one we just had, a lot of people are just going to leave because they're like, I'm not doing that again. And, you know, Coach L did talk about Sam Wardenberg coming back from his sixth year. And, Saying he didn't want to leave the yeah, program. Yeah, leave the program <laughs> in the state it was in, and obviously they ended up in the Elite Eight. Um, you know, a lot of – well, of course, it's a different situation because – um, you know, he had been here five years, so like he was more invested in the program than you know someone that just showed up in the last few months. Um, and and so, but yeah, I mean, there's always going to be people, and this is not even a knock on them. We've had we, that that are going to look around and say, you know what, I'd rather just not be here, especially after you had a season that goes poorly as ours did. I mean, we we lost ten games in a row in the season. As, and that's upsetting for us. I'm sure the players aren't having a great time and thinking, let's run it back. A lot of them are probably thinking, get me the hell out of here. And I think, you know, there's probably more. more. To, there's definitely one name that has not dropped yet, but there's probably more more that, that, might, that might end up doing that. Because, again, when it goes this badly, and then you have other teams reaching out to you and being like, hey, you could come over here. It starts to look – whether it's smart or not is a whole different thing. Um, well, I mean, and then also, I mean, if you watch the the coach all presser, and and Nate alluded to this in the chat, people leaving after their freshman year because they don't think they get enough minutes and not wanting to stick around and and develop like an Isaiah Wong did, um, and I think that was related to Nwoko leaving. I think all of that was centered around him deciding to enter the transfer portal. Yeah, and. And that was definitely who he was talking about when he was talking about, unless like the unless like something like one of the, the fifth guy you talked to was like Joe Bay or something. But um, <laughs> um, because that's another oh, player that's clearly that, 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 that Twitter conversation was. Fun I mean, today. we don't we don't need to 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 go through that. But I, <laughs> I I I do not agree that he has IQ basket very high. Um, so um, I I think when you look at the who the two developmental projects on the team, they are Jobe and Nuoko, and we don't have the fit players. So if Jobe is also in the portal, that would be that would be someone that clearly needs development. But yeah, I mean, but this is so this is the way that the, I, I will say, like, I know I understand his frustration from a coaching standpoint. You know, we we as Nate said, we've had luck in the portal. We're taking advantage of the system as much more so than it's hurting us. So I mean, you can't. <laughs> You can't be via uh, vultures and picking up all these portal kids to build your team out and then, you know, complain when you have kids entering. And it's like, uh, that's the game we're playing, right? And that's the way the game is. So, I mean, where are we with that? If you look at the transfers, right? Off the last, the, I mean, we forget how different 
the Elite Eight team was from the Final Four team. Yeah. It's radically different. Very different. Yeah. And that was Very portal different. into like, like a, it's a, and there's a lot of portal. Right. It was McGusty Miller, Charlie Moore. Yeah. McGusty and we're all transfers. Yeah. Core of that team, McGusty and Miller, I mean, McGusty and Moore leave. We go to the transfer, we get Nigel and go to the portal, we get Nigel and Norchad. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I just, I cannot. So if, let's. Let's just so if Nwoko goes, he goes. I mean, this is the I mean, yeah. game we're playing. Well, no. So we we kind of spoke on Joe Bay. We don't know what he's gonna do, but you're still looking at our other five starters, basically. Right. You I've still not, got Norchad, Cleveland, Keyshawn, Wooga, and Nigel. All of these players have eligibility left. Yeah. So we've had our I mean, Bensley was a starter and then not a starter, but whatever. So we've kind of addressed the bench. Joe Bay, I, I, I don't want to say it's irrelevant. If he stays, he's gonna continue to develop. I think. He's really raw and he could develop into something. So I hope he stays, but it's here nor there. Well, we I still, have our, two, we well, still well, have our five starters that we still need to figure out what's go, what, what's going to happen with them. I mean, and that's going that, that to be a big thing. That'll probably come out. And actually, Melissa, you and I might do a show if Matt can, if like one of the big names drops. But yeah, because I know Coach is talking to him. This I wouldn't expect that just because. Mm -hmm. So what we're, we'll, we'll talk about in a second, but just let's close out the Nooko discussion a little bit. Uh, so my assumption is that. Um. Yeah, I mean, look, that's again, that's the nature of the game, right? I mean, we're gonna lose a freshman next year because Jaleel's gonna go in the top five of the draft. So, mm -hmm. the hell are we talking about? Like, I mean, that's part of the game. One and Duns have been done all the time. The, the, so you recruit Nwoko, right? And he's supposed to be the backup center, and he knows that. Now, everyone assumed this team would be again. We, we've been over this before, but it wasn't just us that thought this team was gonna was gonna be really good this year it was everyone mm -hmm. nationally again we were ranked seventh going into that kentucky game so in nawoko's head he's probably thinking mm -hmm. i sit behind norchad this year and next year it's my job mm -hmm. i'm the starter by the way you can hear all that melissa um and then uh <laughs> it's okay <laughs> and ignore mom and then and yeah and and nate's right and that's what i was getting at but also like if you think about like why why is like Nwoko's so different? Because the season was terrible. That's one, right? It didn't work out well at all. Two, he's probably, I mean, there's probably a decent chance we're going to talk about them in a minute that Norchad comes back, which case he's once again relegated. Look, Norchad's on this team, 35 minutes a game. That's his. So then what do you do? Like who, like, so that's probably playing into a little bit where coming into this year, we were thinking this is Nigel and Norchad's last ride with this team. We're going to be really good, regardless of how it ends. You know, they're going to be in the tournament. That'll be the end of it. Are you going to get back to the Final Four? Probably not, although we were, again, ranked seventh at one point early in the season. So we we're sniffing around it. You know, if we lose in the regional finals or whatever, they'll probably walk out as two of the more successful players in the program's history. And instead, it was a complete opposite. We're By the end of the year, we're the worst team in the conference, one of the worst teams in the country. Couldn't beat anyone, literally. And now, you know, I think, you know, Nigel and Norchad are thinking about, hey, maybe I don't want to go out that way. And all of a sudden, they're taking someone else's minutes. And certainly if Norchad comes back, it's going to take Nwoko's minutes. And so I think that changed things. The other thing is um, Nwoko has size, he has athleticism, and he has no understanding of how to play basketball. And, and I think, you know, it's easier to, to come in from an outside perspective and tell him as a school that is poaching again, everyone knows we had one of the worst seasons we've had in recent memory. They know the portals there. They know our players are looking around. They come to him and say, Hey, you know, you could start here from day one. We're going to get your touches. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Um, and as the team being poached from two things happen. One is, you can't really go to them and do that because, like, why well, haven't been doing that before? I'm already on your team. How come I wasn't getting my touches? The sec second thing is you almost know too much. They know his limitations. They've been coaching him for a year. They're not going to, like, all of a sudden be like, oh, yeah, we're going to run the offense through you. Like, and and so. He prove, but he couldn't prove that he could. Right. No, I, I, I understand that. And, and, and this is why this is like a lot. This is not a Miami problem. This is a. This is this is actually just a fact of life and business. Um, when you're when you have control of something, you know it for better or worse. 
Like we know all of what Nwoko can do and what he can't do. We know where he needs to develop. Other schools coming in, blank slate. Oh no, you don't need to sit on the bench and develop. You can start right now, do all this stuff to get him into the program. Then they start coaching yeah. him and they realize he doesn't know how to play post defense, um, which we saw right time and again. So I mean, so again, there's there's things that that a poaching team has an advantage on, mm-hmm. and and that's how that's how everything works, right? That's that's how business works too. Like you come in there if you don't. Sometimes you know too much, and we know too much here. And you know, again, we've had success poaching kids out from other teams doing. I will say, stuff. like, if you go back and look at videos from before before the season, I thought Nuwoka was going to have meaningful minutes. He his tape from high school, he looked really good, but. The high school game doesn't always translate to college. He looked lost in a lot of games. I know he had a few flashes and dunks and whatever, but he needs more development. If he doesn't want to do it here, he's going to do it somewhere else. If he plays like he did here, he's not going to start at another school. He needs more development. Right, but they'll tell him he will. Whereas yeah, we're not going to bullshit. Yeah. yeah, but we can't, you can't, you can't BS someone that's already in your program. Yeah, Again, no, you know I know. I'm just saying, but I'm just pointing out why he's in the transfer portal. Well, he's it's also, not like, we're, it's not like we have this top five guy that's like leaving. He's a work right. in progress. He has everyone after him, including us. Who are we talking about? Like Nawako, I have no idea. He must be talking about. I mean, I would say Norcha, but Norcha's only been here two years. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Um... <laughs> I, I, I am confused, but um, I think no. he's talking about Nawako. I have no idea. A transfer. Oh, a transfer. Or... What what transfer? Oh, the, oh, transfer. the Drexel That's guy. Why didn't you oh, mention the name like, first before just like out of like, context? I was like, who are you talking about? I is, that the, is, that the, is that like the Williams kid or something? Yeah, that's the kid that Matt Matt propped yeah. in. Yeah, no, absolutely no. You can't and, and this is again, you know, he's gonna we, we were talking about this in the chat, like I mean he's nothing he's nothing different than Favor Air, right? He's a tall player on a team that didn't have tall players, so he got minutes he probably mm-hmm. shouldn't have. Um, and favor error, if you didn't know, this was in the portal again from Penn State, who sold him the dream of you're going to start in the Big Ten. Yeah, and and I think you know that's that's what's happening here. But also, I will say in in relation to you and Matt, I think I was much lower on Nwoko the whole year. Um, I just I don't I I get that there's size and athleticism. I don't think that's a reason to be on the court. And um. Um, he's in the portal again because he got duped into thinking he didn't need to develop and he was ready to play and he didn't play because they got him on campus and saw him but, playing like you need to develop. Also, I, I would like to mention, and I keep, for whatever reason, keep getting into this discussion on Twitter about how come Nwoko didn't get more minutes earlier. I, I just, I want to know what people saw in his Uh-oh. game in the minutes that he played that earned him more minutes. What earned him more minutes is just because he's tall and Norchad was in foul trouble or injured and AJ Casey couldn't handle the five because he's really a three or a four. That's why he ended up playing more down the stretch. But there's he wasn't ready. He's not ready. Right. So and, I don't know and, why I have to keep having this discussion and, of that, and, oh, Nwoko should have played more because he's bigger. Just because you're 6'10 doesn't mean you can play in the NBA. No, his, his skill, as far as this year was concerned, was being the only tall backup. Yeah. And, that, and, that's, and, but that doesn't earn you minutes. He, like, literally, that was that's why, though. Right. And and I'll, I'll do you one further. That that BC game in the tournament, but this this team was, was on dead store anyway. Um, but that... That 16 minutes Nwoko played in the last game of the AC in the ACC tournament game was an, was one of the worst coaching decisions I've seen Coach Hall make. He was so awful. He didn't even grab a rebound until like the last minute of that stretch. Didn't commit a foul. Wasn't there a game where he was in for five minutes and had three fouls? I mean, he yes, he did that as well. But at least if you have fouls, you're doing something. Like he did nothing on the court. And yeah. this is again, he played 16 minutes in that game, and so. There's a lot of development needed. Mm-hmm. I think I think what, what ends up happening is people look at our team, and obviously we're undersized. We have a pl- way that we play. We've had a lot of success with that style. Didn't work this year, but they immediately go like, well, we need all the tall guys we can get. Dude, Nwoko can't play. I haven't plugged my computer in in a while. So. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Nwoko is not an ACC caliber center right now. Maybe in another year or two, 
Mm -hmm. and he didn't want to wait around for it, that's fine. He can go somewhere else. But I mean, he's, this is not, there's not, if you honestly think that there was some kind of magical player on this team that was going to come in and like, oh, this guy should have been playing, that guy should have, look, we've, we've certainly talked about rotation on this show, but like, no, Nwoko is not, is, I mean, there, there was no reason for him to be on the floor other than foul trouble or injury. Like there were, mm-hmm. he was decidedly worse than the starters and mm-hmm. he has no offensive game. He cannot play post defense. Um, he's just tall. Yep. And this is why all these people who casually watch the team and say, oh, well, we need more height. Why isn't this 6'10 freshman playing? There's more to it than just being tall. Like, it, it's so hard to explain to these people who just, they just see it one way. And because we're losing, they're like, well, why aren't we fixing this? Because we're a better team when Norchad's on the floor, point blank. There was and, no, there was no depth behind him. And we we will be a better team when he's on the floor if he's back next year too. We which will. is just another reason that Nwoko is not. Yeah, no, exactly. Can't even be tall, Carly. I think. I mean, we 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 were at we were at that North Carolina game actually. Melissa and I were the home game where we you know made it close. At the where end. he where where Norchad made Baycott his bitch. Well, he did. Except if you look at how the. The second half started, Norchad, I think, got into foul or whatever. Nwoko came in, and then whatever Norchad did to Baycott, Baycott doubled it up on Nwoko. It was bad, bad. Like, he did not know how to defend. He couldn't stand next to him, even just stand there. Like, Baycott just destroyed him, and that's actually when they built the lead out, which they came to end up making a furious comeback and lane violation at the end. But but um, that I – like, I like Nate's reference – Right, and again, it's there, there. I think there's a distinction. It, like Nwoko is athletic; he's tall. He does not know how to play basketball. He does not know. He gets lost on defense a lot. I think. I think when he was in high school, he just relies on his size to to get to what he was trying to do. And you you can't necessarily overpower people in the ACC like that. It's just not going to work. Well, forget overpowering. It's like he doesn't even have post moves. He doesn't have a jumper. So he mm-hmm. can't like step out and hit the mid range. He can't post defend. He doesn't rotate correctly on defense. Period. Like, what are game are people watching where they're like, "Oh yeah, this guy's ready." Now, if we spent time developing him, you mentioned Jakiri. I would say another. I say I'd say Jakiri was better than him from day one. I would mm-hmm. say a good comparison would be maybe Abuka Zundu, who was very raw and kind of didn't know how to play his freshman year. And by his senior year, was one it was a really good ACC center. But it took yeah. him the entirety of for, playing behind Jakiri first, but also just like to develop to okay, this guy knows how to play basketball now. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, like unfortunately, again, that's the the loyal. Well, Jakiri was also aided in the fact of the people that he had around him his freshman year too. Right, right. I mean, right. There was no there was no rush for Jakiri. Right, no, <laughs> that, that that's for sure. Um, but there was no rush for Zundu either because we had Jakiri in front of him. And, yeah. and, and so, but I think, you know, by his senior year, not only was he starting, he was one of the better centers in the ACC. Unfortunately, you know, that's the team that got Loyola. Um, but like that, that is what Nwoko, if he put the work in <laughs> and took the time to develop, could have potentially gotten, gotten to that. Le- but, yep. you know, again, if you're diving into the portal, was he ever going to put the work in? No. We're not Kids surprised. Gabby, I'll, I'll do We're you one surprised. better. We're Virginia's not Virginia's baseball team scored more runs than Virginia's basketball team scored points in the first half. I mean, we shouldn't talk because we didn't play great against them. But I said it. I said Virginia. I mean, we weren't a good team either. But Virginia was not very good. Yeah. Well. Um. Anyway. Um. So yeah. So Nwoko needs a lot of development, and and you know, if he wants to go in the portal, I don't. He's not going to be missed. I'm sorry, people. Like the reality is, we're not. We're not going to. <laughs> the vast majority of players that that transfer out of here, we'd never see them again. Um, and I don't know that this is going to be really, really any different um, when you look at all the other, like, I mean, he, if he goes to a smaller school and drops down a level, you know, maybe we, we've seen some success with that. I mean, Harlan Beverly had a really good solid year, but he was good here too. So, so it's a little different. Like Anthony Walker didn't do much in Indiana. Um, you know, these, um, what's his face? God, I forgot his name. Who was the, 
Matt's guy, Jovanovic. He he started at Louisville for a bit because of injuries, but again, yeah, Louisville, but, but by Louisville the, end of the, the only team that was worse than us record wise. And, and by the end of the year, he wasn't getting any minutes on that team. Yeah. So again, the grass is not always greener. Mm-hmm. But generally speaking, if you're developing and if you think there's a good opportunity at the school you're at, you don't leave it. So um, I, I think uh, I will say there was a lot of speculation that be, when Naboko transferred that that it was a good sign that Norchad's coming back. Um, I don't know how true that is, but that's well. That's so I would people, expect that's what people are choosing to believe, and I'm I'm all for hope, but don't tease me. Well, I think I think you know when we talk about. So I know you want to talk about this earlier. Let's talk about. So someone has already told Coach L they're leaving. Out of these guys that are still on the team, so he said got, five people are either yeah. entering the portal or going to the NBA. Draft. Yeah, well, told them they're leaving, and frankly, don't yeah. care where they go at that point. So, so we already know four. Right, and so the the remaining people are Jobe. And our starting five. Well, let's start. And Jakai, Jobe, oh, okay. Jakai, and our starting five. Yeah, and and um, obviously, um, we don't think Jakai is transferring. And I guess the reason being, um, we actually thought for sure he was transferring before this season because, like, yeah. what's up? He actually did play some this year because of injuries. I mean, if everyone gets injured again, he might play next year. Otherwise, there's really not a. Um, is oh, there oh, a free University of Miami? Well, I think I think that's the thing. He's he's the opposite of like kind of what Coach I was complaining about with some of the other players. He's putting in the work. He's willing to be depth. At least he was last year. We'll see if that's still the case because he did play some this year. Maybe he thinks he has a better chance of getting a transfer. But so there's him. We mentioned we mentioned Joe Bay. He's still very and then, well. And then the starting uh, five. By the way, we signed Joe Bay like in the summer. Last year, like but literally, like a couple weeks before the European. Yeah, year. yeah. So this is not like he was not like a high end recruit. I think he's one that if he if he if if he doesn't realize he needs a couple of years of development, I don't know what to tell you because uh, that was that like there's a reason that he was available that late. Despite like, the Joe Bay burner on Twitter, there, there's I mean that's a whole other thing, but um, um, I I, I so I think he's definitely de- so my assumptions he would know he's a developmental piece because. Again, he was sitting there in the summer, not having been signed. He he wasn't supposed <laughs> to get minutes this year. Well, he wasn't. No, but again, yes, that's that's very true. But again, yeah. we're talking about into the summer. Yeah, he wasn't signed yet. He wasn't signed like this, and he yeah. gets signed to an ACC team that won the conference the previous year. I think at that point, you know your developmental project, um, and it's just a matter of um, you know figuring out where uh so i i think those two will probably be back which now you, you want to talk about the starters let's start with the uh, so in order i think i i still feel like Keyshawn's got to be going pro i think i think wooga has gone i i think so as well i think honestly i'm 50 50 on Keyshawn because of just random things that i'm hearing i'm leaning towards more that he's gone um but some stuff that i'm hearing is giving me maybe a little hope but I, I would lean more towards he's gone. Um, Cleveland, I think, stays. I think Nigel stays. I think Norchad declares but ends up coming back. Huh. Nigel might do the same. Interesting because um, um, what? This is, I'm, I'm, uh, huh. Coach are L, who are you thinking? No, I'm thinking. Coach L said he does not expect people to put their name in the portals and pull them out like Norchad and Nigel did last year. And you just said you expected both of them to do that. I, I just say that because I think he he wants the evaluation. Right, but Coach L said he doesn't expect that to happen. So then I think he stays. He just I, I would say for for Norchad and Nigel. Um, I what are they going to do with that evaluation? There's no way it's any different. Maybe a little yeah. bit worse. I don't know. I, on- I'm more confident that Nigel stays in Norchad, but I think Nigel will have an influ- influence on Norchad because they're like best friends and roommates. Um, and I don't know. There was that clip of you know they asked them at the end of the season, and Nigel said this whole thing, and then Norchad was basically like, "Oh, to sum it up, it's great to be a Miami Hurricane." Like with that smile, like. I, I I just I think he want I think he wants I think he wants to be here. There was rumors that he's gonna go into the portal. I I first of all that would break my heart if he played on another college team next year. It really would. Um but it's the business we've chosen for ourselves. I don't know. 
It's it's rough. I, I I don't I don't think either of them get drafted in the NBA draft. No, so, I, I don't think I think I think so in my I, opinion, it's either you stay or you hit the portal. Right. And I don't Unless think Unless you're I, really that sick of college. I mean you could make a living overseas if, or if you don't if you don't um go to the NBA. Um they both have NIL money, so you know, they're making a living at Miami as well, to your point. Um, it could it could be you're sick of college. I mean, you, you do play a lot more games in the G League or overseas than you ever do in college. Like they play constantly. It's not like twice a week crap that 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 we do here. And so you yeah. get more and yeah, you don't have to worry about going to school and all that. They both will have graduated, so it's not <laughs> you know, there there are reasons to to not to just go pro and you know enter that phase of your life. Um I I don't know. I, I would be surprised if Nigel leaves. I, I do, yeah, recall that, like, Nigel Norch had in the press conference, but, you know, Nigel talked eloquently oh, about, like, he's... But like, also, Norchad's not as talkative. Like, I mean, maybe if you ask him in Spanish. I should have gone. Should we should we send should it was we send here? Norchad? I could have run over to the arena and be like, let me in. I'm gonna ask Norchad. Maybe, should, we send, should we send Norchad the clip of Jaleel talking about throwing oops to him? Maybe that'll convince him to stay. Yes, he's gonna look at like seven figure NIL deals and see a clip of Jaleel and be like, uh um like let's be real, there's a lot of money floating around too, which could be a factor if I think but I, I do think Nigel staying will have a big influence on Norchad. I do. If I had to bet, I would bet they both are back. But you no, know, I would. Where thought... are you with Cleveland? Because I think we're both we're both on like we think Keyshawn and Wooga leave. Where are you with? Yeah, Cleveland? I think I think I wouldn't be surprised if Wooga wasn't one of the ones that might have been the fifth. Him. Might have been the fifth one. Yeah. Um, what about Cleveland? I think he might go pro. Really? And I'm not saying NBA. I'm saying go pro. <laughs> I think he stays at this point. Get your degree. I think he might be done with uh with college. Cool. Yeah. I don't think he, he can't. I, mean, I, I think it? there's some untapped potential there. No, I think so. But I also look again. You know, going back to the conversation we're having about guys are going to put like this. This whole season was a complete disaster, and while. Norchad and, and Nigel and Wooga can draw on the final four better times. I mean, mm -hmm. Wooga was on the lead eight and final four teams. Just mm -hmm. hopefully doesn't remember how those seasons ended. Um, you know, Matt, <laughs> he, he played a big part <laughs> of both of the, I think those seasons, but uh, you know, Matthew Kate was on FSU. They were the worst team in the conference or second worst last year. Um, then he comes here and we're the worst. I mean, it's, it's a lot of losing. I, I believe he cannot transfer again this year. So I'm not sure though. Did they? they I might don't even relaxed. know what the transfer rules are. I think they might have. I think I think they might have relaxed that rule because of like a lawsuit. So yeah, he might be able to transfer. But I mean, three three schools in three years. You know, he's clearly talented. I just think he might be like, I'm just gonna go pro. I, I have a feeling that 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 might be his. I don't think he's going to transfer to a third school and let me try again. I think it's either he'll come back or go pro. Well, so who left? Obviously, <laughs> obviously Keyshawn's been projected as a, as an NBA pick, but right. I don't see anybody else. Maybe we'll go late second round. Maybe that would get drafted. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not even talking about getting drafted. I'm talking about going pro. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying like, I don't think any of them are going to be in the NBA besides Keyshawn. No, but there's other ways to. Yeah, to no, but you play overseas. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it just depends on what they want. I don't see why. I don't see how you, at least, don't finish your degree. Is this what I'm saying? But again, I'm not an athlete, so. Well, you can also Miami lets you come back and finish it for free later in life, so that's actually important. You can think about that. Just finish it and play another year of ball. They are, they're playing on playing several more years of ball, just not a and, and also, I'm just going to say it, like there was rumors about Norchad going into the portal. I just don't see it happening. He either he either puts his name in the draft or he stays. I just – I don't see him going somewhere else. I really don't. I, I don't – I don't know the financials. And, you know, someone steps up with a huge amount of money. I know, but the culture and everything down here and – He's not going to be an NBA player, though. Mm. 
if you get if someone offers him seven figures to go play basketball in I don't know Kansas or Kentucky for a year, mm-hmm. I guess we'll see. I mean, I don't think we're gonna step up and match that. You can only get nil. Yeah, we know. We know Kane's got cheat. Yes, and and I just want to let you know the boosters with billion dollar pockets will fly their ass down and to to Nicaragua the same way that that Johnny Ruiz did. That's not a hindrance for the, the price point we're talking about. It's not a ten thousand dollar handshake. This is seven figures. Yeah. Right. They'll make the plane. Then yeah, exactly. So it's not. It's it's that's that's not a thing. Like that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Should we, do we want to end with our Rushmore? Yeah. So just real quick, let's recap. So we both have Nigel and Norchad. Here. I think we both also have, we, we still both have Jopé and Jakai. Yeah. So we, so we both think we got four players, then Jaleel, uh, Austin Schwartz and Johnson or Rigo, I think I'm saying that right. Arigu. 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 Yeah. Arigu. Um, so that's, that's seven. Cleveland and Keyshawn are question marks. And yeah. we think Luga goes. Yeah. So that is probably, let's average that out and say we're at eight. <laughs> yeah. So we need we got players. four, four to five. Of walk-ons. Yeah. Well, we need. So I think I think that's the target. in The portal will be three to four, four players. Yeah, three to four, I think. Yeah. But again, I, I think you know people looking at our our scholarship. I mean, where we're short. Every major program is short now because of the portal. You lose guys. It's mm-hmm. too late to fill them. You're not going to take. In fact, Joe Bay was what we did with an extra scholarship spot. Yeah. This is worth the flyer, but a lot of times the guys available that late, you're like. No, I'll just hold the scholarship. There's no point because yeah. <laughs> be stuck with that guy for four years. Yeah. So, all right. So we're going to choose to do a Rushmore and we're going to do a Mount Rushmore of our favorite moments from the women's season. Um, do you want to go first or you want me to go first? Um, why don't you go first? Um, so I'll go with my first one has got to be, uh, Lachey going off in front of her family against NC state and us getting the win. Nice. That is a good one. <clears throat> I I'll go with, are we, are we not repeating the same ones? I didn't have that one on my list, but I mean, actually I don't, we'll, have, we'll I, you know what, we'll you know what? I, I, I won't, well, you're going first. I won't repeat any six. I'm winging it anyway. I'm, I'm gonna leaving, go. I'm leaving it too. So I'm gonna, okay. Perfect. So we just won't we'll just call an audible if we miss. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with with Julie. I mean, this is so painful because we won this game and didn't get it anyway. But Julia banking in the three at the buzzer in the first half against North Carolina and decking, <laughs> knocking Z Dang. over and, and stepping totally over her. I totally would have used that one too. It's... Knocking over Z. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I'm gonna go with. I'm going to go with a game that I just enjoyed watching because of the situation when we were watching us beat DePaul at Hangry Joe's in Virginia when I flew in in December. That was a lot of fun. And look at Hangry Joe's getting some positivity finally. Well, we were watching that on your phone and it was a close game and the ch- the food wasn't good. And then they were trying to close, but we wanted to finish watching hey, the game. Hey, hey, I feel like I feel like Hangry Joe's has gotten it. I didn't slander. have an insane flight delay, so the, de- the day was already good. Henry Joe has gotten way too much slander and caught too, way too many shows. It's fine. Hey, Blue also, Boy is better. Out, both of my games so far, I have watched with you. Oh man, you're, you're guilting me. You're guilting me out. Of, we didn't watch. We didn't watch that many games together though. So yeah. So, so I, I got Shea versus NC State and DePaul, and you've got the Jalea banking the three and running over Z. Is that though? Did we watch any other games together? I don't think I have one that no. we watch together. Well, there was the Colgate, there was a non-conference game. There was the there was a Colgate we went to. There yeah. was Colgate, which is you know the caliber team Columbia beat to get into the tournament. But yeah. Let's not so what's your second? It. I'll go the the Clemson game. We were down seventeen, came all the way back to force overtime, won in overtime at home. I was at that game. That was that was a big big comeback that should have carried us into the tournament, hmm. <laughs> but it didn't. Um, I'm going to go with well, – I'm going to go with Cheyenne going off against Duke. That was a good one. Her former team, of course, Jada Patrick's former team as well. Um, yeah. They, uh, yeah, Cheyenne smoked them. Um, it was amazing. Wait, you weren't at that game with me? I'm pretty sure I was at work. It was a Sunday, so, yeah, I was probably okay. at work. 
Yeah. All right. What's one. your third? I, I guess not. I feel bad in picking anything with you. Um, <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, uh, let's see. I mean, you so, can pick Colgate, but other than that. <laughs> I mean, picking the Colgate. Okay. Um, you got to pick Mississippi State. You were there. I was going to do that one last. Thanks a lot, oh. Big Mouth. Sorry. <laughs> Just do it now. Just do it now. All right. No, don't Mississippi, it. <laughs> Mississippi State. It's classic the show. We're both such loud bats. We step on each other's points. Like, I was gonna say that. Why'd you say that? Well, you gotta do though. I know, I know. I was gonna go last. I was gonna use that one last, like half an hour much more. But my bad. But no, that's typical fun. I do the same thing to you all the time. It's perfect bucket symmetry here. We all just step on each other's points. Yeah, I go into the I went to the Mississippi State game in Starkville. We blew them out. Um actually kept them out of the NCAA tournament because since we were banned, apparently, without anyone telling us. Um, you know, they couldn't go because we beat them. So, yeah, but that was that was really cool. I sat, I, I um, sat kind of with the team <laughs> and, yeah, talked talk to a couple of players, some of the coaches and uh, the staff um, and, yeah, the water person. <laughs> get, get, like, they're handing out water to the two. Yeah, they gave hand and be one, too. It was just like, it was very, it was a surreal experience. And obviously getting the win there, big, big win there was was, was a big, good one. That was, that was uh that was definitely my top memory of the season, which I was going to end this with, but whatever. We can go third. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, trying to think of, I'm trying to pick a fourth. <laughs> you know what my fourth my fourth one is going to be? Anytime Z got a bucket. Anytime Z got a bucket. As my, my, my favorite player of the year, anytime Z got a bucket is my fourth memory. Anytime Z got a bucket. So my four is Shea versus NC State, watching DePaul lose in Hangry Joe's, Cheyenne going off against Duke, and Z just getting buckets. Yeah, my, my fourth – oh, God, should I do this? I'm thinking – all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick a loss. Uh, the Baylor game in Waco. Um why? So it was another one I went to. I mean, so well, we lost the game, but we have their their Baylor's really good. They're in the tournament. It's one of the thirteen tournament teams we played. Mm-hmm. They they jumped out early. It was basically a road game. It was in San Antonio. It was a neutral site, but it was like all Baylor fans. Um, mm-hmm. and we played tough. We hung in there. That was the first time Allie really got into a game. She had a bunch of threes. I mean, obviously she's transferring now, but you know, I was proud of the team. I talked to Coach Meyer's wife before the game. It was a uh, it's so when I look back on the season, I'm gonna remember that more than like beating Colgate, for example. So yeah, um, to me that was even though we lost the game, I thought it was a good growth. That was the first loss we had this year, but I thought yeah. it was still a good good growth for the team. And you know, again, and honorable mention, Lamaya like hugging coach after big plays that we turned into a gif. Oh yeah, that yeah that's cool. yeah, yeah that that was fun. Yeah, that was, it was a fun team. They played hard. Um, ignore it. Um, so recap your four. Yeah, I've got. Oh man, am I gonna even remember? So I got, I got, I got. Uh, Julia knocking over Z, silvering, banking in the three. Um, I've got the Clemson comeback where we're down seventeen at the half and came back and won. Um, I've got the Mississippi State game and the Baylor game. Good stuff. Vish definitely traveled to a bunch of games because he went to Bay- went to the Baylor game and to the Mississippi State game, and he was down here. He went to a lot more games than I was able to go to because of my job. Um, but what was – so out of those four, is Mississippi State like your favorite one? Yeah. I mean, Mississippi State and Baylor are, are special. because well, my, favorite, my favorite was NC State. I mean, that's mine, too, overall. Like, well, like, it's not only that, but, like, so we went into the NC State game. We had just gotten blown out by Virginia Tech. We had just gotten blown out by Notre Dame. We had beat Wake. We had lost Boston College before that. We knew we were playing another ranked team in North Carolina after that. It was just, like, this gauntlet of, like, five or six ranked teams. And, like, the men weren't doing well, so I like, wasn't in a good mood. And me and Vish went to this game, and we won. And it, it was just kind of like a pick-me-up for the season. Yeah, and and you know that we we agreed not to repeat. That certainly would have been on. I mean, that whole yeah. like, I mean, like Melissa said, she doesn't because of her work schedule and and different from the men who, 
know, their games tend to be on Saturdays, which is the day you generally have off. The women tend to play on Sundays, so you generally are working. Yeah, so you're working during a lot of their games, but that one that we were both there together and be the top five team, beat them pretty badly. Um, <laughs> cool. The second half, the second half, Jackson yeah. came and sat with us. And yeah, Jackson came with, and sat with us. Then we went yeah. to Titanic. <laughs> so good. Yeah, no, I mean, this is the, so as we kind of, Oh yeah, know, I got my Caesar salad. Yeah, anytime there's a game and I can get a Caesar salad from Titanic. I mean, we beat, we, we went to the game together. We beat a top five team. And then we had um, good food. And then we, I mean, come on. Yeah, so and I, I think when you, uh, you know, as we look back on, on what was ultimately, you know, disappointing end of the season. Um, still a lot of good memories. And that's why I wanted to do a Mount Rushmore because the, the ride was pretty like this team obviously deserved to be in the tournament and yeah. And the the the, the trip there, a lot of good good memories from the season. And ultimately like that's why we do this, right? And mm -hmm. it's the it's the journey along the way. It's the people you meet. Um and uh we weren't doing this show last year at the start, so you're the people I need. Um, so yeah, definitely like that. Yeah, no, we weren't doing the show yet. This was this time last year was was we were about to start a very interesting journey of Kane's hoops because the men made the final four and yeah. the women made the lead eight. So I mean, we don't. I think it still hasn't like dawned on me how insane it is that like within like a six hour period, both of our programs because that was on the same day, like an hour apart, <laughs> made the <laughs> lead eight. And they almost both played in the final four yeah. in the same state. Yeah. No, but the I, men made the final four in Houston. Had the women won in the Elite Eight, the uh, final four was in Dallas. Yeah, no, I would have done so, both. But um, um me and Rich they, met at the final at the final four. I would have been we would have been going to Dallas for sure. Um, but me, Vish, and Matt all met in person for the first time at the final four. And this is how this pod began. So despite the struggles this year. First of all, both hoops teams will be back. Not even worried about it. But uh, this pod has been birthed from some awesome basketball. So it has. we are, we are sad that game. the season has ended, especially because it shouldn't be over for the ladies yet. It most definitely should be over for the men. So. <laughs> yeah, no, it should <laughs> Well, for them, apparently they stopped playing about a month ago. Also, to, just to end, because I know we're going we're gonna to leave a second. We, we kind of addressed this, but... Do you agree with the women turning down the WBIT invite? Um, I think it's understandable. It's understandable for me, and I, like there's there's multiple layers going into this, right? So I totally get not you know like being like I'm not that's that's BS. We got screwed. I'm not playing a consolation tournament now. Mm -hmm. Like it's like. I mean, I don't know how to how to contextualize this, but it's kind of like you know you were deserving of something, and you didn't get it. And you're seeing all these people less deserving that got it. And like, well, you can have this piece of crap. And it's kind of like, no, F you, F everyone. You know, it's yeah. the old, old Miami, two middle fingers in the air. The other thing is, it's like, because we were the number one overall seed, like, we would have lost money, you know, from a financial standpoint, every single one of those games. Because it was not, it was not going to be a full arena or anything. Like, we would have, the, the amount of staff that it takes to, to, Look, I I went to a lot of the women's games. I know Melissa did when she could as well. Like, there's not, not a, there's not a lot of people there, but the number of staff you need to run the arena safely mm -hmm. is still is still fairly significant. It's not as many as the men because they don't open all the concessions up, but the support staff, there's ushers, all of that, um, all of that is you know they were gonna lose money on these games, and then yeah. and so like that that aspect also has to come into play. Like, no, I'm not playing in your BS consolation tournament losing money you were it. ready to be there though no i was gonna go and that's the flip side though there's also the element of you know we wanted to see more basketball we wanted to see the team play again like we we, we love this team we and... weren't expecting that that virginia tech game in the tournament to be our last we thought we would have at least one more in the tournament so right and, and so sure players thought that way i'm sure jada thought she was gonna have at least one more college game left well that's the thing i i would i mean i don't know that we will ever know i wonder what her thoughts because she's probably – she's like Sophia Zulich, uh, you know, her knee's messed up. She wasn't going to play. Mm -hmm. um, but Jada's the one that's like, that's it. For she started for us the whole year. Yeah, but that's also – that's it for her. She's the only one who's – that's it for her college career. Yeah. And so I do wonder what her thoughts – was she – like, did she want to play? Because I almost would have asked her, do you want to play this or not? If you want to play this, we'll go play this. If you don't want to play this, we're not doing it. 
But again, I think that the, I don't even know if the decision was made within the basketball program. It was probably made within the administ- like the the school administration of just like, look, the amount of money we're going to have to spend to scramble people, pull people in to run this thing. Well, I mean, it was made pretty quickly because they announced us and took us down mm-hmm. real quick. There, well, I'm there sure it couldn't have been 20 minutes. Well, because I think I think they announced us first because we were the number one overall seed. They did a whole tournament show. Yeah. Um. And and my guess is as that was show was airing, our school's probably reaching me like, you know, we're not playing. I'm trying to see because I tweeted about it, so I'm trying to see if I can well, find the timing. Well, I mean, um, I'm sure as the show was airing, even our school was like, uh, we're not hosting this. We're not playing in your BS tournament now. Yeah. I will say, you know. <laughs> Nate, that's hilarious, dude. That might just suit. Oh no, it doesn't give me times anymore. It just says days. So wait, no, no. Here we go. No, you hover so over I the tweeted. Time. So wait, the the WBIT announced that. Well, it was since deleted, obviously. Announced that we were the one seed at nine oh two p.m. And then hold on. Yeah, let me that go. was that was two minutes after the previous selection show ended. Nine oh two. Let me see when they put the James Madison tweet. Hold on. It was after their show aired. Trying to see if I can find it. Yeah, you know, the interesting thing is I saw they announced JMU as a one seed at 953. So maybe it took a little bit longer. But hold on. When did they let me see if I can find like the bracket that they put? I mean, there were articles still on the NCA website with us in there. Um, but I, I think well, um honestly, if, they probably yeah. deleted it. No, I'm sure they have by now. Um but yeah, no, actually, I did see the JMU tweet that was randomly on the WBIT account. I'm like, wonder where that went. I didn't realize that that was a Miami replacement until I saw you mm-hmm. say, like, I'm checking. I saw your tweet, like, I'm I think checking. I texted you saying, I'm like, Summit. I don't think we, I don't, because you were planning to come and I texted yeah. you, like, don't do anything yet because I don't think we accepted. I, mean, I would have just moved the ticket anyway, but, um, yeah, or just hung out in Miami. Um, but, uh, the, Nate, um, are you really joking? Yes, he's joking. <laughs> we're not cleansing an FSU with like we signed a contract and we don't want to abide by it, so we're suing you. Um, yeah, no, but that was it. Was um, yeah, I saw the JMU tweet and I'm like, wonder where they wait till the tournament was over to tweet that. Like that's kind of weird. I didn't, I didn't even pay attention to the other number one seeds and all that. I was like, that's odd. I totally didn't dawn on me that they had replaced us. <laughs> and then later, I was like, "Oh, that explains why." After they tweeted all the other teams out, all of a sudden, it's like JMU, our number one seed. Very, very weird times. Very weird times. But um, I don't blame them for not doing it. Honestly, no, I mean, no, I, I don't at all. I, I, I don't, I don't blame them. Wanted at all. to see more basketball, but like I could argue for and against it. I do think with a team like this that is veteran, that's had a lot of players that you know they played. That's every player, maybe not Ali and Jada, obviously, had played in the NCAA tournament. So it wasn't – like, this was not, you know, a team that's like, oh, this will be good postseason. No, this is a team that's used to playing in the real tournament. That's like – it's not going to buy – that experience is not going to buy, buy – them. I think it's very different from the the Canes men's team that went and lost to uh, Stanford in the NIT final when they got hosed on a foul call, um, where that team had not been in the postseason for a few I years. I watched that game at the Rat. Wow, were you still in college then? Or is this college too? Was this an OG college? No, no way. I don't know if I was still a student or not, but I'm pretty sure I watched that game at the Rat. I think this was the year before. Oh, this was your second. Um, this might have been your second. You went in again in 2015? 2015, 2016 was my master's, yeah. It might have been because this was the year before. Um, this was the year before uh, the Sheldon and... and uh, I think it was the year before the Sheldon uh, Angel Rodriguez team made the uh, Sweet 16. I'm Googling. 2015. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we lost by two. Yeah. And the second screen comes in handy. I do need to adjust it because it's moved a little bit, and so it's getting a little bit too close to the edge. So I'm going to feng shui that after, but... Yeah, so that I think that was useful because that was a team that hadn't really played in the postseason. They needed it. This women's team doesn't need that, so it's really to me. Basically, I, yeah. I I kind of I kind of agree with their decision as much as I wanted to see more basketball. Unless Jada wanted to, play. you just wanted to come to Miami and get Titanic with me. 
I know. I mean, I I did want to like order liquor and be like, can you believe this? Leave <laughs> and have that session in person versus on the stream. But, um, well, now you can just save it and come down for a baseball series or something. Yeah, I'm coming down in April, end of April for sure. Oh, my, my you niece can buy me a beer for my birthday. My niece is graduating. <clears throat> Which is like, she's on campus. So like they took photo, like they did graduation. I don't remember graduation in preschool, but whatever. <laughs> um, so they, uh, they I like, think I had a graduation in preschool. I don't know, but theirs was like all of them in little caps and gowns standing in front of the big U on campus. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's the life. No, ours was like. Like, how long have you been a cane? Ours was like in the synagogue because yeah. I, I went to my Hebrew school for preschool. <laughs> I went to uh, to Aggie Land Country Day because I was in Texas. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, my knees. Went to, <laughs> I don't think there was a temple that's on where I was. <laughs> not, in, uh, not in College Station. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Uh, maybe there is actually. It's a college town. There are Jews there. Um, but. Uh, um, this is a yeah. good tangent because we literally just talked basketball for an hour and a half. Yeah, no, this is a good that tangent. Was, we were so <laughs> we were so upset that we stayed on topic for like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say, like, when my niece eventually goes to Miami, which she has to, she knows this. Um, you know, she'll be like, "How long were you a Canes fan?" Well, this is me graduating from preschool on campus in front of the U. You can play <laughs> the recording of her screaming that you were going back to DC, and oh, she was bad. sad you that her uncle was leaving. I mean, not for this graduation. That's like high school graduation. No, but I'm saying that's so cute, her. though. His four four year old. Five now. But five year old niece. Yeah, he was four at the time when he was going back to he DC. He was five at the time, so December. His yeah. sister's taking him to the airport, or and just dropped him off, and her his five year old niece is in the backseat screaming bloody murder because she's so upset that her uncle isn't in Miami anymore. And her two year old brother is trying to console her. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, 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 uh, he's cute too. Yeah. Well, he his only, back. his only sporting event, he went to a Miami women's basketball game. That the was Go his Canes, only, right? Who says yeah, it's the Go They Canes? both do. They, when they see the U, they say. It's Go not the Miami Canes. Hurricanes. It's just the Go Canes. Can yeah. we go see the Go yeah, Canes? Yeah. He's, Go he, he's the one who cannot comprehend that there's games without Go Canes in it. So if you're watching like another, it's him. always Go Canes. <laughs> yeah, basically, just tell them what team to cheer for. Be like, okay, yes, the Go Cowboys. Yeah, the, the black team, that's Go Canes this game, or the, the red <laughs> team is Go Canes, or just like, because he won't. It's like, Go Canes is in play. Wait, but which one's Go? Uh, all right, it's that one. Whichever one you want him to cheer for, just tell him it's one. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else to add? Oh, I wanted yeah. to close it on, on us propping the women's team up. So let's talk about them for two minutes and then get going. Just because I want to give them, the give them more, awesome. give them more love. But shout out to Coach Meyer and her staff, to the players. You should be playing this week. The NCA is a bunch of retards. <laughs> well, we're not clipping this now. <laughs> no, we're not clipping. That. I don't even know. There's honestly, I don't even really like good. that word. I don't even know why I said it. I, I don't, don't know what it's because it's because maybe I'm it's because so we're. Pissed. I really don't like that word. No, well, it's we're good. yeah, no, it's fine. Like we're that was that was her for those that that aren't with us. We're apologizing for using that term, but um, mm -hmm. but no, it's because we're an hour and forty seven minutes into a stream and we're just you know you're. They're morons. Yeah. Um, Is that better? I don't like that word. I apologize. I don't like using that word. No, I know. Um, they're morons. Like, screw the NCA. Like, honestly, it's just stupid. Yeah, I'll just say, you know, it, the season didn't end the way uh, we wanted it to, but it was still, you know, there were a lot of good wins on the way. And this team always plays hard, so they're a joy to watch. And, you know, as long as Coach Meyer is the coach, we know that'll be the case. Whether the team is great or whether they're not good or this year they were very good and got screwed wherever it lands you know there's the gonna be a statue of coach meyer or something named after her yeah. no that'll, she, that'll happen when, when she, she retires that. one day long long in the distance we know that the same thing with coach l um but it's just a shame that a deserving team didn't get in the tournament yes um, but i was, I, was I, I wanted to, you said you want to say something good i don't want to complain i want to say something talk positively yeah. about the women's program not negatively about the ncaa yeah sorry I'm just That's okay. No, I know we both are, but I will, you know, just for yeah, everyone. Good every, things now. Yeah. Start well, over. well. <laughs> do you want to start over, or do you want me to just oh, go? Go ahead. Go. Okay. Go, 
So no, I was just like, as, as I was saying, you know, this is, it's a program that the one thing you'll consistently get is effort. Um, they're really fun to watch. They play hard every game, whether it's going good, whether it's going poorly, you know, it's, it's, it is one of the more accessible teams on campus for fans, for people to go to, you can pay five or $10 and go sit at mid court. Like, I, I think, you know, this is something that, that the community should get behind more. Um, we're lucky we get to cover this team and, you know, it, the season ended poorly, but we're very proud of, of this team. And, you know, we know they'll be back stronger next year and, and uh, hopefully uh, next year host the, host the tournament. Like let's, well, let's the, the season <laughs> ended poorly, like not to any fault of the team. Right. Exactly. It um, ended on a sour note. It was, it was, the, it, was it was a great was season. Great. A lot of a lot of really fun games, a lot of fun moments. Um, we've been lucky enough to have Coach Meyer on the show twice. She named the show. She was our first guest. So this this podcast uh, fully supports the Miami Hurricanes, both men's and women's basketball teams. We support all Miami teams, obviously, but we cover basketball. The women don't get enough credit. Coach Meyer doesn't get, and her staff doesn't get enough credit for what they've done. Um, but next year we'll be back better than ever um there won't be any question we will be in the tournament um and yeah here's to more wins next season cue the socks outro you know what i, wasn't ready for it. I wasn't Fail. ready Fish. <laughs> i have to click through like three menus to get there you were mid-sense just threw it out there that is that is a bensley joseph <laughs> pass over to me and now you're blaming me for the turnover it's not on the screen. Can I have you, to click can over. You just edit, can you edit this like like half like 30 seconds out on, on YouTube and <laughs> on YouTube? It's live, man. We go live. <laughs> you can't just cue the socks out to a mid-sentence. Like it's not even I on the screen. I know, but I have to click over to like another menu to get to the freaking thing. <laughs> I need to like like when you're normally when I know I'm gonna wrap it up, I've already clicked over there, which is annoying. Because it's not it's not the same place. I if I have that open, I can't see the comments. So I see the comment batch count go up, and I'm like, oh, crap. Got to switch back to show the comment. And switch. But I was not expecting you to just all of a sudden. It's been sauce. two hours. I oh, no. I knew, I knew we were wrapping up, but I didn't expect you. Great oh, season. Join okay. the watch queue. The socks out. So, like, that is not, that is not so how this works. We, so since Matt's not here, quick final thoughts. On Anything. Matt. Matt's a great guy. What are we talking about? On anything. <laughs> since we, you need you need more of a, a lead-in to us ending the show. Well, I didn't expect you mid-sentence to be like, great team, great year, Q socks outro. Like, I'm like, what the hell just happened? I got to get All over right. there. And final thoughts. Shout out to our co-host, Matty Icy. Um, hope your ankle's doing good. Check the pod tomorrow. They're going to do a full men's bracket breakdown for the tournament. Um Go Beach, Go Canes. We don't even. We still don't know the. We still don't know the nickname for Beach. By the way, what is the nickname? Why also, are you ruining the ending? I know what you were doing because we still should play. We have baseball on Thursday. It's Canes on deck. In addition to the bucket <laughs> show, six rings next week. This is Monday. worse than Lord of the Rings. It's like seven endings. How many Lord of the Rings have seven endings? <laughs> that, that's a whole other story about the end of finals week when I was in college and having All to right. watch the extended versions for the first Wait, why time. Would you, why were you – anyway, that is a whole other story. We're not ready for that kind of tangent. <laughs> I've been trying to end the show for 15 minutes. Yeah, closer to three or four minutes hasn't been that long. Are we, are we done? Are we? Kane's on deck this week. Buckets again tomorrow. Go Beach, go Canes, cue the socks outro. Don't cry, keep it chill, wear good socks.